Okay, now that you know what's a private cloud, what's a public cloud, what's a hybrid cloud, you also know what's a infrastructure as service, platform as service, and software as service. Well, you may have several questions by now. The questions may be, well, if I create a server in the cloud, who's responsible for it? Is it the cloud provider or is it me? If I am using Gmail and if I lose my emails, who is responsible? I uploaded quite a lot of data in platform as a service in my database. Who's responsible for it? What if my data gets compromised? What if my data gets hacked? Who's responsible for it? In this lecture, you will understand the responsibility and ownership of cloud provider and what's your responsibility and we'll use the analogy of consuming a pizza. Now, there are several ways in which you can consume a pizza or get a pizza for yourself when you're hungry. First box that you see is where you will be making your own pizza, that is in-house made pizza. Now you have a lot of responsibilities out there if you want to make a pizza, it's a heavy duty task. You're responsible for the toppings, the pizza dough, the oven, making sure that the electricity is there, gas is there, the kitchen utensils are there. So you gotta have all the ingredients in place. It's quite a lot of responsibility in cooking something at home. As opposed to, well, you go out to the market, pick up the things that are required. Let's see, go and pick up the pizza dough, and then you pick up the toppings, and etc. You pick up all of those things, and then once you reach home, you assemble them together and put them in the oven. Well, your pizza is ready in some time. You have very less responsibility there because you have just given all that responsibility to the ingredient provider could be Walmart or Target or wherever you may want to pick up the things from or well, you don't have to cook a whole, whole lot of things in the, in, in the second case where we refer to as kitchen as a service in the third case the third box where you say that hey you know I don't want to cook I have no mood so you're gonna just order your pizza you just call your favorite pizza provider and then they get the pizza for you you're not responsible for the ones in green which is kitchen gas oven pizza dough it's not your responsibility at all because the uh, the favorite pizza guy they are the ones who will be creating the pizza for you but once it arrives at your home you are responsible for few things right you got to decorate it, you've got to have a dining table, a place to sit and eat and all that. In the last section, which is pizza as a service, so you do nothing, you drive to the place, order your pizza from Giordano's, <laughs> or then get your pizza delivered to your desk, and then you consume it and pay the bill. You're not responsible for cooking the pizza or, or the toppings or pizza dough or oven, so when you are dine in, then you're not responsible for anything, right? The different ways and we'll use this analogy to understand what's your responsibility in um, kitchen as a service as opposed to walk in and bake as opposed to pizza as a service right now let's see how we can compare it with each of these like on-prem and infrastructure and platform and software as a service well on your premise is as good as cooking the pizza or making the pizza at your home that's a lot of responsibility right Similarly, you have a lot of responsibility when you think about provisioning something in your office. So you want to make everything in your office, you want to host your application in your premise, then you're responsible in each of those layers, right from the networking layer all the way to the top application layer. What kind of uh, network connectivity do you want to have? Is it straight cable or fiber optics or a cross cable? What kind of storage? Well, is it SAN, NAS, or DAS? Do you want to contact IBM, or Dell, or HP for the servers? What kind of virtualization model do you want to go for? Type 1 or Type 2? Should you go for Hyper-V or VMware? What kind of operating systems are your application supporting? Linux or Windows? If it's Windows, what flavor? And then if it's Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu, Red Hat, which one? Well, there's a lot of thinking that goes behind provisioning the infrastructure on your premise and that also is directly proportional to the amount of time that you will invest. So remember the three key things that I told as to why we go to the cloud. CAPEX, 
cutting down on the capex, cutting down on the operational expenditure and time to market. On-premise infrastructure just takes down a lot of time and a lot of investments, and hence the need to move to cloud. So in, in your premise, you are 100% responsible for every layer in every entity. Let's talk about infrastructure as service. What's your responsibility? Well, you know that in infrastructure as service, you create servers, let's say. And your responsibility starts right from the moment you've created a server. What's the hardware on which my virtual machine is hosted? That's, that's something we don't care, and it's not my responsibility. What's the virtualization layer or the underlying virtualization layer? Are they using KVMs? or para-virtualization, are they using Hyper-V or VMware, is something that I'm not at all concerned about as a cloud user. When I create a server in the cloud, it will also create a hard disk for me. But what kind of storage is the backend using? Is it a SAN? Is it iSCSI? Or DAS? Or NAS? Well, let's not worry about it. Networking. How about uh, the cross cables or straight cables or fiber optics? Well, it's, it's not our concern at all. But your responsibility starts from the operating system layer, the ones in the blue, which is operating system. So once the operating system is installed, you install the patches, you do the server hardening, and you as cloud user will be installing the antivirus, you will be updating the definitions of the antivirus, you will be opening the right set of firewall rules so that right set of people can connect to it. So those are the responsibilities that you have what kind of applications will be downloaded on the machine and installed, server hardening procedures, security, protocols, that's your responsibility. So the ones in the blue in infrastructure as a service segment is your responsibility. Once in the green is cloud provider's responsibility. In the screenshot, you see managed by Microsoft, but it could be any provider. It could be Google, it could be, um, it holds true for any cloud provider like Amazon as well. Platform as a service. A platform as a service is, you understand that, it's like more like a databases or anything that runs in the backend. So developers do not have to focus on the backend activities. Now, when we think about such entities like databases, hosting the data on the database is the platform as a service administrator or the application developer's responsibility. What's in the backend, networking, storage, servers, virtualization, operating system, is not my responsibility at all, right? Now, when we think about data, hosting the right kind of data, securing the data, encrypting the data, and then also ensuring the data is backed up at regular times is your responsibility as a cloud user. What kind of applications are connecting to my database? That is also your responsibility as a cloud user. In software as a service, we do not have any responsibility. The entire section is in green, networking, storage, servers, virtualization, all the way up to the top to the applications layer. We have no responsibility. So think about Google Gmail services or Microsoft Office 365 services or ServiceNow services. We are responsible for our internet connectivity and ensuring that we don't share credentials or passwords with anybody, right? So you don't give away your Gmail uh, credentials to anybody you keep it confidential that's all but you do not have to worry about what's their electricity bill what kind of hardware they have in the back end what kind of operating systems are they running in the back end how many people they have what kind of manpower they have in the back end this is not our responsibility well to to give you an overview of this we are responsible for our data but keep in mind ultimately it's the customer's responsibility to protect the data to ensure that the data is confidential, to ensure that the data has integrity and data has availability. You know, when we design systems in the cloud, we always think about design for failure and design for security. Always have highly available systems and always have highly confidential information protected by multiple layers of defense. In the upcoming chapters, in the next set of lectures, we will understand how do you protect your systems where, by encryption, by having multiple layers of defense mechanisms. So that way is you will have your data protected from unauthorized people who have malicious intent.